How's it going? I'm here with another scenario. And this one actually coincides with the news again because the Chicago Blackhawks have acquired Andrew Ladd from the Winnipeg Jets. Now, why does this matter? Well, I had a comment that said to uh, put together the 2010 roster of the Chicago Blackhawks and act like they all stayed together. So I did just that. And as I get this set up, I will show you. There we go. Chicago Blackhawks. There we go. Start the season. And you can't see it there. But uh, let's edit the settings real quick. Superstar. Hardcore simulation. Uh, 20 minutes. Yup, yup, and yup. Advanced settings. No edit lines for the assistant coach. Uh, is that it? Uh, no injuries also. No injuries. And I think that is it. So let's start. Let's start it. Now, let me show you the lines here. And I got a couple rules that I have to say before I get this started. Obviously, there are a few players from the 2010 roster that are no longer in the game. Such as... Uh, who is uh, Ben Eager. Brent Sopel. Those are just a couple guys that were not in the game. I didn't bother creating them just because... There's a lot of things you can't tell just by looking at stats on how good a player would be. Now my rule for this is, if a player was on the 2010 roster, he cannot be scratched. But, if there is an open spot, the best player available, any player that I want from today's current Chicago Blackhawks can go and play in there. So our teamy Panarin, he gets in there. Uh, let's take a look at... Uh, real quick at the scratch just to make sure uh Versteeg will not be scratched. Uh, I will address that in a second But first I need to take a look at the roster moves To uh, make sure there's nobody in the minors that shouldn't be and we can take a full look at the roster uh, In the system there we go All right, so Rob Skitter can be down there. Uh, yep these are all the guys that are in the minors because they have to be. Uh, Skidari could be on the team, but we do not have a spot for him. Uh, defense, or no, goalies, goalies. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, like Scott Darling, he has to be in the system. Uh, Cristobal Hue could have been up, could be up there, but it doesn't make sense for us to carry three goalies. I mean, I guess he can come up. It doesn't really make a difference. We have to send people down, though. So he can come up. But Corey Crawford did play one game in 2010. Therefore, he counts. So Chicago, you get lucky on this one. And I'll send uh, Svedberg down. Uh, I don't know if I can send TVR down. But uh, one forward has to go down. Uh, Tevu Teravainen, he was not on the team. There we go. Alright, so that works. And let's go to edit lines take a look at the lines and make sure nobody that was on the team was scratched best lines um i still see one guy that is missing and it looks like shaw i'm gonna take shaw because i i want panarin in there uh shaw you are coming out for versteeg there we go uh and let's go ahead and just send him down so i can hit best lines the computer can do uh, what I, whatever it wants to do without having to worry about him getting into the lines. Confirm. There's no waivers right now because we are before the season, so we don't have to worry about that. There we go. All right. Options. Best lines. There we go. So this is how the computer views it, how the lines should be. Uh, I'm not going to mess with them, really. Uh, defense. Uh, Duncan Keith and Dustin Bufflin together. Man, that looks dangerous. Jean Merson and Seabrook, Brian Campbell and TVR. Uh, the other defenseman that I believe was on the Blackhawks team was Brent Sopel. He is not in the game. I think there was one more, uh, but I can't quite remember. Uh, let's just make sure nobody scratched that should be playing. As far as I can tell, no. Uh, I should check the minors real quick though, just to be on the safe side. 
in the system and defense. Uh, Rob Skidari was not on the team, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, so we got everybody who was on the team, and these are what the lines look like. And let's take a look at the goalies. We got a deadly tandem here, and Corey Crawford and Anti Niemi. Corey Crawford played one game in the 29-2010 season. Uh, I, I would have felt bad if I didn't include him just because he wasn't uh, an actual backup and he, he only played one game, but technically he was on the roster. He played one game. I have to count it because, I mean, he played. It. There's no doubt about it. Anyway, with that said... Let's just jump right into the season and simulate up to the all-star break. We can see how the guys are doing and how badly this team is tearing it up. Because honestly, this team is absolutely stacked. So many members of this team came out to become good players. And speaking of good players, Andrew Ladd, he's coming off of a fantastic season. Hasn't been doing so hot this season. He turned down... Uh, what was rumored to be a 6x6, six, six, six years, $6 million average annual value. He turned down that offer from the Winnipeg Jets. And from the looks of it, he kind of wanted out of Winnipeg. So anyway, he is out of Winnipeg now. He is in back in, he's, uh, back in Chicago. Uh, he's got a chance to win another Stanley Cup, which is just fantastic. Uh, I, I wish the best of luck to him. I hope that my team, the Red Wings, wins uh, the Stanley Cup. But you know what? Best of luck to the Blackhawks. They really solidified their chances. They only gave up Marco Dano and a first, which it's going to be a late first because obviously Chicago's going to make the playoffs and probably go to the second or third round, if not the finals, and or win it all from there. Now, that and they also gave up a third round pick in 2018, so they don't have to worry about that for a while. Marco Dano... Should get plenty of playing time in Winnipeg. Uh, we'll see how he develops, but this could be a great trade for both teams. Uh, now, let me tell you why that is right after we take a look at the stats. So we're 34-11-8 at the All-Star break, and it looks like we're going to win the President's Trophy. Now, if we can just take a quick look at the stats, and this will stop loading or whatever, that'd be great. Uh, I'm really surprised about the amount of overtime losses. Combined together, we have 19 losses. Uh, that's a little surprising to me. I thought it'd be a little less, honestly. But uh, we're still the best team in the division. Uh, I don't know about the conference or anything, but we can check the, the stats. And I don't know if you saw that, but Patrick Kane has 75 points in 53 games. Holy shit. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness, I've, I didn't even think that was possible uh, to have somebody score that much in NHL 16. It looks like he's going to have 110, 115 points. That's insane. I mean, we got how many games left? What, 29? And he should score another, what, 30... <sighs> five points during that time so yeah he's looking at a hundred around 110 points i've never seen anything like that in nhl 16 so far he's having an insane year like oh my goodness uh jonathan taves patrick sharp andrew ladd marion hosa artemi panarin uh this team is super deep they're so good and uh they're just hard to beat i mean they're a great team with all these guys 76 points through uh, 53 games, I believe it was. Let's take a look at the entire league. And yes, we are atop the entire league. As I was saying earlier, I thought it would be better. We're the best in the league. Can't get better than that. Uh, just see, so we're 0 0.3 goals per game ahead of the next closest person. We're just in, in or I shouldn't say we. <laughs> I hate the Blackhawks, honestly. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks are just a fantastic team. Uh, they've got the second best defense in the league, the best offense. If they're not looking like they're going to win the cup right now, 
then I don't know what. The best power play. Let me guess, best penalty kill too? Okay, <laughs> no. Probably one of the worst, yeah. But I mean, that doesn't matter. And 9-1-0 uh, on the past 10. Uh, so yeah, that's incredible. Let's just see where Patrick Kane lines up with the uh, the rest of the league in scoring. Because he's on an insane pace. Just like he is in real life. But I mean, my goodness. Uh, yeah. Nobody's even close. That, that's what I thought. Nobody's close. Alright, so let's continue simulating. And we can get back to the Andrew Ladd and Marco Dano trade. I'm not going to make any trades at the trade deadline, so I'm just going to go ahead and simulate past that. Now, as I was saying, this trade uh, could be really good, if not great, for both teams. And that is because Andrew Ladd can help them win now. I don't know if he will stay after this year, but if he helps them win now, Chicago completes their goal, and they can be done with Andrew Ladd if they don't want him. Now... On Winnipeg's side, they got a prospect in Marco Dano, who he should get plenty of playing time in Winnipeg because the top six spot just opened up. I doubt he'll slide into that, but he'll be a nice third line guy. We have to see how he does in Winnipeg, how he adjusts to the new uh, situation, uh, gets chemistry with all the new players. We'll have to see how he fits in. And if he does fit in, he fits the system, he could develop into an amazing prospect and be a solid second line, maybe first line guy. Now, that's not as good as Andrew Ladd, but when you team that up with a first round pick from this year, if Winnipeg picks an average guy that can be a second line, maybe first line guy, in the future, they will win the trade. But... If they both do that, like let's say Marco Dano gets to be as good as he can and they make a solid pick, and Chicago wins the cup this year, both teams will win that trade. You don't see too many scenarios like that happening. And happening, and in fact, you probably shouldn't even call it that, but that's how it looks like to me. And oh my goodness, Patrick Kane, 116 points. What did I say? I even underestimated him. I said 110 to 115. He goes out and gets 116. 66 goals and 50 assists. Holy shit, that was amazing. Uh, you had, other than Patrick Kane, you had three other 20 goal scorers. That's incredible. Uh, Jonathan Tay, 70 assists. That's insane. Oh my goodness, I just, oh my god, Patrick Kane put up unreal numbers, and uh, just so you know, I use the uh, the current roster, uh, like the online rosters from this morning, and uh, then put all the players on this, I didn't edit any of the rosters or anything like that, so everything that you're seeing is the actual stats, I didn't change anything, and uh, you, I can prove it right. Uh, just by looking at this, you can match it up for whatever you want to. Uh, Jonathan Taves is the second second highest scoring player in the league. And he wasn't even close to Patrick Kane. That's just insane. Uh, wow. And uh, I think we won the President's Trophy too. 118 points. Certainly looking like it. And yeah, we did by landslide. 13 more points on the LA Kings. They were the next closest. So let's get into, uh, actually, no, let's take a quick look at the playoff tree. Uh, that's how the playoff tree looks. I'm not going to go through it, but you can pause it and take a look if you'd like. Uh, so let's just go ahead and simulate some games here. I'm not going to go through them in detail. I'm just going to go ahead and simulate past them. Oh, my God. How did the Oilers make the playoffs? <laughs> I, whatever. It's NHL 16. I'm not going to question it. Uh, we got Nashville in the second round here. Let's just go ahead and simulate past it. Ooh, lost in game one. Uh, ooh, okay. So this Chicago Blackhawks team lost in the second round. They did not even win the cup. They lost to the Nashville Predators. That's surprising. Uh, let's just go ahead and keep simulating and see how or see who wins the Stanley Cup. Uh, wow, I really thought this team would win. What in the hell? Whatever. Uh, I guess it just wasn't in the cards. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that's just about it. Uh, 
New York Islanders win the Stanley Cup. So, so far in these scenarios, I've had, what was it, Vancouver and the New York Islanders, which is just weird. They won in seven games over the Predators. Uh, you won't see that happen in real life. Uh, this is NHL 16. Obviously, everything isn't exactly right. But you know what? Maybe it was the President's Trophy curse, I guess. I don't know. This is NHL 16. This is not real life. I do not know how well this team would do if it uh, had all stayed together after the 2010 season. They definitely wouldn't have Panarin. Uh, they run into huge cap space problems. Uh, there's really no telling what this team would do right now. Patrick Sharp is an amazing player. Andrew Ladd is a good player. We'll see how he does with Chicago. Uh, who else did they get? They got Bufflin, uh, Bickle. Actually, no, Bickle's already on the team. Uh, they, they just got a bunch of players uh, that were good, and they all played together at one point and got even better when they left the team because they could all be uh, have a bigger role on another team that didn't have so many good players already there. Uh, but yeah, uh, here are the awards. I'm not going to go through them. You can take a look at them if you'd like. But yeah. So this is what would happen uh, according to NHL 16 if the 2010 Blackhawks were together in, this, in today's NHL. Well, that'll do it for this time. If you guys have any more suggestions, just let me know. Uh, I read all the comments. Just put it down there. Uh, so that'll be all for now then. Until next time, I'll see ya.